here you have it, folks. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome back to our last episode of Among Trees. We've really reached the pinnacle of what we can do in the current available pre-alpha version, which, again, you can download with the link down below in the comments section. We have our completed house with our greenhouse to the left side, our sewing room in the upper right, our crafting room, and, of course, our attic added to the house as well. And it's been a fantastic ride. I'm currently playing with the version that we did during our live streams, which uh, I've completed building the backpack and also the outfit. I wanted to show you what those look like. So we're wearing the uh, feather larch outfit and we also have the thistle backpack equipped, which has 16 spaces. And also check out this cold resistance, stamina, speed, and camouflage that the feather larch outfit has as well, which really just required going out and finding all the materials needed to make it. Man, this game is still beautiful. I absolutely love it. Our greenhouse, though, in this save is a little different as I don't have any turnips or anything like that growing, but of course the beets are going just fine and nothing really beats that. It'd be nice if this game had some terraforming, but I wanted to show you all the things that we did and a few decorations that I added to the house. Really just vanity by having uh, extra pipes found and some extra woodworking stuff. You can see here we crafted an owl and a bird and there's a blackbird over here by the uh, somewhere around here. Um, but yeah, really, really good stuff, Ooh, including the fish. So I did find out, by the way, that the one thing that we required skin-wise was uh, fish skin, which is just random by going to the lake. And so I'd say at this point, in order to really 100% the demo, uh, what I would call this just to be a demo at this point, because there's a lot here, but it does come to an end eventually, is to really explore the map. Here uh, is the, like uh, the edge of the lake. So we really just have like a northeastern section to go explore. There's a large mountain here that we really can't go past, and there's another bear that's around here somewhere, too. There it is, that uh, we haven't yet seen here. But again, keep in mind that this is a different save, but yet it still plays out the same. The map is the same. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to show off all the cool stuff that we did and can do in the game, and that we can continue to still do, like, for example, getting the other backpack and also the other outfit. But those aren't as beneficial. I want to go up to the sewing room now and show you all exactly what those other ones would entail, which we could do for 100% brownie points, but given the fact that it's a pre-alpha means that we would have to do it again anyway. So the Walt's Bleak Skin is a type of fish, and I believe there's three or four types of fish that you can find. And I'm going to actually show you a method that I found that works for fishing, too. I want to go give that a test this episode. Everything else is kind of random as to where you find bees and stuff. Not random. It is predetermined on the map, but if you just wander around in the woods, eventually you'll find everything that you need. So for the Gross Beak Wanderer outfit, it gives us a lot more stamina, but not really that great of a boost to speed or camouflage or cold resistance. So the outfit that I, I picked, in my opinion, is just a little bit better. But we could still craft it. Uh, we just need to do some more fishing. And same with the backpack. We just need to grab some more uh, dog bang stems, which are easily found in the, uh, I think the southwestern part of the cabin has about six to eight of them sitting there. So should be more than enough. So those are the things that remain at the uh, sewing item station. And I really just did a lot of great work in this game of, of kind of finding stuff on my own and figuring out techniques and stuff, and I really enjoyed it. So let's take a nap and let's go fishing tomorrow. The extra backpack space, by the way, opens up a total of 16 slots. So now that we've discovered a few more things in the map, uh, for example, uh, each one of these caves has a blueprint in it, and also the areas where the bears have blueprints in it as well. So if we go over to the crafting table real quick, I do want to show you one last thing bef before we leave here. Um, now, I don't know what reinforced planks are for. I don't really think that does anything, so that's kind of an item that you can craft, but doesn't really give you anything. But I must say, or maybe it's actually a way to uh, bypass steel pipes or something. Maybe you could make a reinforced plank, uh, and then that'll count as a pipe. I don't know. But anyway, the campfire cooking kit, the campfire and the tent are wonderful for staying out in the woods, especially if you're going to try to go to the further edges of the map, so that way you have an area to uh, sleep in. So it's probably a good idea to grab a tent, a campfire, and a campfire cooking kit, and then just head out into the woods. And with those three things, probably also bring yourself a pickaxe. Uh, I think you actually only need to really bring a pickaxe if you're going to salvage, because if you come across a mine, you can use that. And if you're breaking boxes from the tower sites, you can use that as well. But only bring that axe if you're looking to cut down trees, which will definitely help you get sticks. You'll just have to leave the furs around. But let's go fishing. Let's end this game right with some relaxing fishing and talking about techniques. Now, I really want to see this game updated now. There's a lot here already in my opinion and I see that there's only going to be much much more added over time I also hope to find some turnip seeds but uh, it is confirmed that you can go back to the, some of those quote-unquote salvage sites in order to uh, bring back all the uh, 
stuff needed to maybe find some more seeds and whatnot. So actually, let's take a look at our garden. Now that these are fully grown, you don't have to water them anymore, I believe. Uh, but they're almost fully grown, I should say. So a little bit more time and they'll be good to go. And turnip seeds are simply found out in the... Um, out in the field so for the seeds by the way if we harvest these when they're ready there's a chance that we could get something called beet seeds which gives us another full box so each one of these could possibly give us one seed which then would fill another box so you could do the math here to figure out four times four on this side would give us x amount of beets it minus i think 50 percent for the chance to find seeds so maybe every other that you harvest so once you set the greenhouse up it is a good idea just to stay home the entire time and do a little bit of farming and kind of monitor those. So it's a good time to also uh, maybe grab some uh, some type of like uh, other objective that you need to complete. Like, for example, uh, cutting down trees or something like that. Staying near the house so you can come back to water. You can see when I sprint too, there's a few more dots at the bottom, which increases our stamina. Now, the last thing I just need is a fishing pole. So let's head out there and I'll have to figure out where I put that. There it is. Each save was different. So that'll be fine. And we'll link that to our hotbar under... Through two. Let's go two on that one. Or three. That'll be fine. All right. So every one of the lakes, as I've seen so far, also has the same type of fish. Now, I don't know if they're more plentiful in one lake or the other in terms of their percentage of biting. But there are several lakes on the map, uh, including the one in the center. Sock Lake up here, as I call that one. And then the smaller lake here, which fish are rarely biting in that one. There's also a... Uh, kind of an ocean area to the north, which we saw in previous episodes, so keep in mind that there's always the uh, opportunity to go up there and fish as well, but I think this is really good practice so far, and also cattails are found at Sock Lake as well, so keep that in mind if you're looking for any of that, uh, then that's up at that lake, and that's pretty much the only place that I've found it so far, and we've explored a pretty good portion of the map. Okay. So now, let's go fishing and experiment with some of my tactics. Uh, this rock here I might fall into the lake with because it, it is a little tricky. But I've noticed that, uh, and here we are, this is the best place in my opinion to fish. And this part of the rock right here, every time I walk through it, I seem to fall through it. So it's good to just jump out here. Now here's how fishing works, and here's how I've had some success in trial and error with fishing. And a very important type of uh, thing too, by the way, this is very end game because you need fish bones for threads, you need the skin in order to make some of the clothing for uh, the outfit, you need the thread for the backpack and the outfit, and of course you need fish meat for uh, just day-to-day -day survival and making special stews. Another thing that I did too, by the way, is in this game I prefer to make a lot of little meals because if you make the ultimate meal that brings you 100% warmth, 100% health, and 100% food, you don't necessarily always need that, so you can make more meals out of more incomplete meals. They probably don't taste as good, but you can survive out there longer. So here's how to fish. So that little bloop right there means that we can uh, cast our line there and reel it in through that area, and there's a chance that the fish might bite, just like that. So this is how I've found a way to uh, fish. At least it works for me. And so every time that there's a little circle, that means there's a fish biting, eating bugs or whatnot on the surface, just like in real life. And if you cast behind it, you might have yourselves a fish. There we go. Almost looks like it went through his nose, not his mouth. <laughs> All right, so we'll have ourselves some fish bones and that. So let's try that again. Let's see if we can get a three out of three on this one. So we just wait for another fish to bite, or not bite, but touch the surface. And then we reel our line through that little blurp. and we wait for them to bite. Sometimes they don't, and that's okay. Then you try, try again. So then we'll try this one here. And this is why this is a good spot to do this in, because it really helps you to see. Now I think reeling in helps because it's like jig fishing, where you need to keep it off the bottom and really get the attention of the fish. So let's try this one more time. Timing, I think, is of the essence. You need to cast it pretty much after the fish makes its presence known. And I think I also need to reel a little bit more, so let's try that. I think we really need to uh, reel it in a little bit there, Raptor. Come on. Something along those lines. Okay, let's see if we can get one more. I just want one more fish, just to prove my theory. Though, of course, now that I'm trying to show you all, it won't work. But I've had more success by doing it that way. And I guess that first cast was probably the best. Now it's raining, too. 
Who's to say, though, if fish bite more during the day or during rain or during nighttime? It does feel like that. But this is something you'll be doing for a very long time. I've spent two days out here just to try to get my outfit by getting the correct uh, fish type. And by having our tent set up, it's easier to just stay out here, sleep, and then go right back to fishing in the morning. I just want to try to get one more fish. Come on, fish. You're, you're making me look like a goof. Come on now. I want to show the people. Well, it's a tactic that works. Easy to learn. Difficult to master. At least it worked for me. But that's how I got my outfit and my backpack. Let's see. Come on, just one more, fella. There we go. One more, fellas. Come on. Come on, boys. One more. Now, as for defeating the bears, I don't think there's a way to actually defeat them. There, I, There's no way to kill them or whatnot. So you just kind of got to stay away from them. But the camouflage in this outfit we're going to see here today is going to work just fine, I think, for getting close to those bears. I just need to get one more fish. And as you guys know, fishing isn't the most uh, action-intensive thing in the world. It's just a slow-and-go process. Well, so much for me acting like I knew what I was talking about. But anyway, it's worked for me, so I hope it works for you if you get access to the game. All right, let's get out of here, and let's go bother a bear now. So, when we go up to the bears... Their AI and such, I've, in the recordings, I've only died once to the bear at the beginning, which you guys saw, which was great. But in this game, in this live stream that we've been doing, I goofed around with the bear a bit, and it seems like the bear can outrun you. But once the bear sees you, the bear attacks you. And then once the bear attacks you, he kind of has a cooldown period where he really doesn't do anything, which allows you to sneak away and possibly... Um, here we go. Uh, possibly hide from the bear. Now, as for those decorations earlier, by the way, remember to have yourself a lot of nails, uh, sticks, fur, pipes, and a few other things. Actually, the bear should be able to see us right now, because I'm not in the uh, I'm not in this grass here. But this is where we should be. So let's see how the camouflage works now. Is what specifically it is meant for for the bear. So one thing we know for sure is that you need to be in this yellow grass to hide from the bear. Not a bush, but it's really this type of grass here where you can see the uh, eyeball is now a little slit at the top. It used to be an eyeball up there to show that we were somewhat visible. My goal here is to try to get turnip seeds. The fishing was a was a success, I guess. We're not coming back empty-handed, but... Man, look at that big old bear. I also think the AI is a little programmed to come towards you. Wow, that is amazing. Look, that, that bear is... Bears are huge, but that is literally a crate there. Like, that's not a shoebox. That's a crate. That goes up to, like, a person's knee. That is crate -Z. Okay, let's see if we can sneak around the bear. Now, I wonder... We should be visible again, but maybe we have a type of camouflage when we're out in the open like this. Or maybe it just gives us a bonus camouflage while we're in the in the grass, maybe. Okay, let's see if we can find some turnip seeds. Now remember, turnip seeds are only found inside of uh, metal crates and piles of junk. So looks like we are visible to the berries coming to investigate. And we have scared the bear. Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay, well, let's go ahead and search for turnip seeds. Yes. So as I mentioned before, the bear has like a little bit of a cooldown before he attacks. And we're dead. Cool. That doesn't really matter too much since I'm trying to goof around with the bear's AI. Uh, can we load the last save, please? Hello? Game? Hello? We have to start and end with dying to the bear, right? I mean, that's how these go. Alright, we're back. So we're just kind of goofing around to see what is different with the uh, bear's AI and how the camouflage responds. I wanted to show you just a few of the things that you can craft, which all require yellow ash leaves and uh, a steel pipe, which again will continuously respawn from those salvage sites. 
And then here's a few other the uh, wooden things that we can craft, art-wise, which are really nice. Okay, we're at the uh, morning or the evening of the previous day uh, since we quote unquote died, but no better way to uh, end the series by dying by the bear. I want to keep working and goofing around with them to see exactly how they function, because when we play in the future, it's going to be you know bears are going to be on. It's it's unbearable to play without them, and I also want to see if there's other creatures that are added to the game in the future that could be harmful. So perhaps wolves in the future, uh, maybe, I don't know, some sort of a snake or uh, spiders, I, who knows? There could be many a thing that happens out there. So my main goal before we end the series then is to get turnip seeds, and then we can uh, have ourselves a fully automated greenhouse. We never have to leave the house again with the greenhouse up. We can just stay here all day cooking. And then out in front of the house, of course, we can cut down trees to get sticks. And uh, they continuously replenish too. But there might be a, a thing in the game where eventually uh, things don't grow back as fast anymore. You want to see something funny, by the way? Let's see if this is still here. Oh. In a previous uh, stream, I cut down one of these trees and it got glitched and wouldn't fall on the ground. So it was like growing a tree within a tree. Oh, by the way, if you didn't know this, by the way, check this out. Boom. <laughs> it's a secret shortcut. All right, we're just waiting for the sun to go down. There's my little bear and fish sculpture. That's cool. Ah, there's our little blackbird. Isn't that cool? You can see him up there. It's really neat. And uh, I've noticed that plants can only be put in the windows, which is kind of cool, too. But I'd love to be able to put them in here on the shelves of the greenhouse. That'd be kind of cool. Now, I'm hoping for a lot more things in the future, by the way, uh, in order to plant. So, for example, out in the woods, there could be anything growing, like onions or mushroom, like we've seen before. And it'd be so cool to be able to put some of these things in the greenhouse uh, maybe if we'd like added a floor to it. It actually has a stone floor, so it'd be kind of cool if we could go like down a ladder and uh, go into different parts of the of the map that way. All right, let's get ready to go goof with the bear again. So let's go ahead and grab some of these. It'd be cool if we could distract the bear by leaving fish or uh, honey or something on the ground. That'd be so cool. I'd love that. Let's also bring a health kit because we might need to heal up. So let me craft one of those too, and let's go battle the bear. Battle of the bear now. I just want to. I just want to get. Those turnip seeds out, but I want to I want to tempt fate, like it's fun. We've done everything else, so okay. Let's make some uh, medical kits now. We need to make sure we have extra room, by the way, for uh, for that. So this uh, the med kit is the only thing that can cure poison if you're uh, if you happen to eat one of those dotted mushrooms. There we go. Let's make one more. And also, this is the only thing uh, to uh, cure bleeding. And the only thing that seems to cause bleeding is the bear. So let's see. We'll leave sticks behind. We will need the, uh, yeah, we will need these things now. And we'll leave the, uh, rags behind. So that should be fine. Okay, let's go to bed and we'll go mess with the bear now. So the camouflage seemed to work. I, the, the bear's AI is so weird. When he first attacked us, he ran away and then kind of turned around and then detected us again. So it's a really, it's a really strange way the bear acts. It's, it's really weird. Okay, so let's go and eat a meal. Good, and let's go mess with the bear. Now there, again, there are two bears that I found so far, but it's um, rumored that there are four on the map, and that means there's four sites that uh, still have those piles. Once you've uh, cleaned out a pile, it's completely um, used up, in other words. So let's go mess with the bear again. And this is a good way to learn. There's no consequence other than having to restart from the previous day, which is okay. I actually should have saved back there, but that I should have saved back bear, but that's fine. Come on, let's go mess with the bear again. So let's get our health replenished, our stamina replenished. Bear is over there. And if you listen closely, by the way, while you're playing, you can actually hear the bear. Oh, that's weird. You can actually hear the bear stamping around. I'm not seeing the camouflage notice popping up at the top of the screen. So there's no note to us being hidden or visible. And bears are active 24-7 too. So it'd be nice if there was a way in the game for the bears to actually go to sleep and you could, you know, settle in or if they'd migrate from site to site so you could come back later. Oh, he's curious now. Well, I certainly don't like that. Let's run from him and see how far we can get now. 
I think he's given up the chase. I can still hear him walking around. Wow, we can actually outrun the bear. Okay, so we know for a fact that we can outrun the bear if we have this camouflage. Ooh, these are valuable. The uh, Chikroi or Chikroi is found pretty much randomly around the map. You will need a lot of these, so be on the lookout. Uh, that's for backpacks and stuff later, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, so confirmed. You can run from the bear, and confirmed, it seems when the bear's curiosity, or whatever you want to call it, detection level reaches about half, he walks over anyway, so you may as well just be detected, because if you leave the cover, he'll see you, and if he comes closer, he'll see you. So it's like a lose-lose scenario. I'm also wondering if the lighting makes it easier for the bear to see you. We're distant enough to where he doesn't seem to notice us. But if we come closer, he might. There's no camouflage notice on top of the screen anymore, so I can't really tell if we're hidden or to what extent. It is easier, by the way, to come in from behind the bear. I've had to success in raiding pretty much the entire site by coming in from over there. By going uh, south from the house the day before. I need him to be over there so I can get these uh, turnips or whatnot. The bar is less than half, so he's not coming over. And he returns to his patrol pattern. Now he's going to come back over this way next. That's kind of part of his patrol. Now he goes a little further first. He should be able to see us. Once we, yep, once we touch that box. So let's run away from him. Oh! That was... He must have teleported. I've seen that happen before. Did he teleport now? You should be out, able to outrun the bear. He must have teleported. There's no way. Huh. That's weird. But now let's see what where the bear ends up. He attacked us, and now he's standing right there. So if he doesn't move, this could be a good situation. If we lure him away, he gets a hit on us. He doesn't seem to be moving. Well, this could be a good tactic to sneak in here, then. Lure the bear to you, get attacked, run away, get out of his sight, heal up, and then return to loot items. Interesting how that AI works, isn't it? The bear is just kind of like out of the way now. And now we can loot pretty much without worrying about the bear. We just need to stay away from him. Kind of scared me too when I got attacked by that bear. I, I swear he must have teleported. If we outran him once and... Oh, who knows? Okay, there's more piles here. And it is easier to come in from this side because there's much more grass and areas to hide. Well, now we have turnip seeds, and those are pretty plentiful if you can find new sites to loot. I'm going to try to get to that one box down there. And it seems that the bear's AI is off the patrol pattern now, so he's more scanning that way. So long as we stay away, we should be okay then. But I can't tell. The camouflage is supposed to be increased under this outfit. More than our previous outfit. This is the one we were wearing before with literally no camouflage. And this has a greater boost to camouflage, but doesn't seem to be that different. Oh, it looks like there's a pile here. Let's grab that. Oh, it's uh, been looted. Alright, let's see if we can get this box. Ah, ruby beet seeds, but we want more turnip seeds. Let's go mess with the other bear, then. We'll swing by the house. So that might be a way to deal with the bear, is to get him to come to you. And then just basically heal up once he attacks you, and he should be staying still. I think that might be a glitch, though, but... At least he makes the 
the bear a little easier to deal with. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Time to go home, then. So we'll run all the way back to the house, and then I'm going to try to see if we can go to the other bear. And we'll plant our turnip seeds, too. Wow, look at how long we can run for. We're almost all the way back home. Wow, that stamina boost, though. Jeez. Okay, let's see. We want to grab ourselves some turnip seeds now. We've got... Oh, good. we got two groups of turnip seeds. Great. So let's plant turnips. Now, you only get three here, so take three times four. And then I think each seed might be 50%. Like, you get a 50% chance at harvest to actually uh, grab seeds. So take a look here. See? It seems about 50% as to whether or not you can get seeds for doing this. And I think ruby beets stack up to eight, so we got quite a bit of time here. So check that out. Now we got more seeds that we can grab. Let's put these in storage. So now that I'm pretty much at the end game, now is where I want to learn about how the bear and such functions and other things for survival and, and next playthroughs. If I do a, another playthrough on the highest difficulty, we'll have to see exactly how difficult it really will be. There we are. And we'll leave the other beds for... Uh, turnips, I think, when they're finally fully grown. I would like the ability to make my own crafting boxes, too. More of them, so I could be organized my own way. But it is what it is. Let's grab ourselves a watering can now. Another thing, too, by the way, in order to put things in the hot bars, here you can press 2 to 4, and it'll actually bind it down there. So that's kind of helpful. And if you need water, you just head down to the lake or river. And keep in mind, each individual plant has to be regrown. Or rather, watered. So you're not watering the bed, you're watering the, each individual plant. Every game's different. Lovely. Some of this end game stuff is just really nice. Like, now we can just live here and take pictures of it all the time, you know, and make desktop backgrounds out of it. So again, this is why you're going to want to come back to... Don't, don't start your greenhouse and then go camping for a few days. Your plants will die. And you will have to pluck them out and... Uh, refined seeds elsewhere and also we'll have to get that watering can operational okay let's go bother the other bear I'm just gonna dump off stuff at random we'll keep the uh, items with us though so let's try this and we'll just keep stuff for our bear raid we're not going on an air raid we're going on a bear raid let's have another meal and go check out the other bear site so to go to this one we just have to cross the river and through the woods and we take a left at Grandma's house, and uh, we should be at the bear. So we'll see what's over there. Probably some more turnip seeds and whatnot. Oh, I forgot to say. That's ah, fine. Who cares? It's all good. It's all fine. All right. So dying by the bear helps me to understand, you know, I'm like the bear whisperer or something, but that guy got eight in the end, so that's probably just my luck, too, is to be eaten. I'm really hoping in this game that we get a even bigger map and it would be just absolutely incredible to find other buildings to rebuild and such and to have a map that is just absolutely almost infinitely sized. That would just be so cool. So the other bear is up here. Let me just make sure I'm going the right way. So we'll have to, uh, Is that where the... Uh, okay, that's on the other side of this. So, yeah. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to be spending a lot of time wandering around looking for stuff at random and it's always a good idea to keep stuff but I would say the attic's probably once you build your crafting room the attic is probably the next thing you get because when you find stuff like for example if you find mushrooms and ruby beets but you don't have the ability to cook yet you could at least store them for later okay now here's another bear so where is this bear I can hear him Ah, there he is. Perfect. So we're going to try to be stealthy. If we get caught, we'll try to have him attack us. We have more med kits ready to go. And then we'll see if we can get him to stay, like, away from the, the actual spawn zone. Some more rope. I'm just here for turnip seeds, to be honest. I may have already raided this, too. Okay, here comes the attack. Now let's actually watch him. Let's run a reverse. Wow, look at how fast he runs. 
Maybe he didn't teleport the first time. But then again, if the tr if the bear can run through the trees and we can't. It might make him a lot faster because he can run straight forward. The bear is huge. Absolutely giant. But he can just go through the trees. So that's annoying. Okay, so the bear is right there. And so he's just staying in place now. So the stun and run tactic works. It seems like the bear is the one who uh, loses the fight. He attacks us and we bleed, but we beat him so hard that it's just he goes dumb and doesn't chase us anymore. Okay, well that's a viable tactic, I guess. And it looks like I may have already come here before to raid stuff. Because I don't see any piles. There's a lockbox over here. Piles are a good sign of you not being to an area before. Unfortunately, no turnip seeds here. I may have come here before. But it's a good idea just to check around. Unfortunately, these boxes won't have turnip seeds, and that's what I'd like to find, but that doesn't matter. Those other turnips will probably, you know, one out of two give us seeds, so we'll probably end up with, like, three turnip seeds, and we'll do another plant harvest, and then we'll probably be able to plant all of them. Okay, so some valuable ideas here, some valuable tactics for those of you playing for the first time, is that the, the bear seems to glitch out after the first attack. If you back away far enough, he doesn't uh, ever come back to uh, chase you. It seems like he can either teleport or at least run so fast and through trees that he may as well be teleporting. And uh, fishing, good idea to cast past the fish and then try to slowly reel it. Maybe reel a little longer than I did, but it's always a kind of a learning experience. you got to find the sweet spot for that one. But regardless, a beautiful, beautiful game, isn't it? It really is. Let's go back home and... Basically, from here on out, we can just stay home. I, I would say, really, 100%ing the uh, pre-alpha would be to play on the highest difficulty on survival. Explore 100% of the map. In other words, try to unveil everything that you can. There's certain areas you can't, but most of the areas you can. And then to build the entirety of the house, build all the outfits and backpacks, even if you don't need them. And then uh, discover all the, the sites and the bears and stuff. And then you can have yourself a sustainable home where you can plant stuff at a greenhouse. Every house nowadays should have its own greenhouse. That should be a law. Like, it's such a cool idea to be able to grow your own fruits and such. I know many friends who grow tomatoes and who also have peppers and other things like that. Of course, you won't be able to 100% sustain yourself, but imagine growing your own stuff and being able to choose from it night after night. That's kind of cool. Green beans and things like that. I've done that before. And wow, does the house look amazing. Look at that. That just looks so cool. Absolutely astounding. I love that. Now, if only we could get some sort of lighting in the house, that'd be nice too. Unfortunately, decorations don't do that. Let's go ahead and save our progress here, and that'll, that'll be just fine. Let's check on the turnips. So the only time we really need to leave the house is whenever we need the watering can. And it seems like we won't be able to do this entire thing. I wonder if we can make more than one watering can. Yeah, we could actually have two watering cans going. And, um, let's actually see if we can make another one of those. You can have one watering can for the turnips and one for the beets. And you do get free water in the first one when you build it, so that's helpful. Uh, let's see. We need moss. We need bolts, I think. Got plenty of materials. So that's good. And look at all the stamina we could have, too, by the way. It'd be nice if there was a another outfit or something. The ability to have shoes and other things, that would be good. Okay, so now we have two watering cans. Nice. And more beet seeds and stuff. Cool. Alright, well, let's water these bad boys while we're waiting. Now, I believe they need water while you're sleeping, too, because time passes while you're sleeping. It's not like it's daylight hours only. Seems like our water can is actually almost empty. Although this is the new one. Don't tell me their inventories are linked. Hmm. Let's do an experiment. We have a watering can here. So let's water it. Let's, let's zero out the water. Okay, so we have no more water. Now, let's see. That watering can was in storage, so how could they be how could they possibly be linked? Three 
three and four. Oh, watering cans are linked. So this, if I try to, okay. So watering can. Yeah, it seems no matter what, they're they're linked. Okay, well that's another interesting thing to note. So note to self, watering cans linked together. So you can only really only have one can, which is annoying. So if we go to the river and bring both cans, we're really only filling one. That's strange. Wow, the things that we learn through experimentation. That's cool. So uh, don't build two watering cans because the inventory is linked to one. Once one can is empty, they're both empty, which is weird. But there you go. 21 days we've survived, and boy, oh boy, am I starving. But that is pretty much all I know for tactics in this game. And I'm sure you're starving to see more Among Trees. But this will be the end of our playthrough for now. So for those of you asking, when are you going to play, you should play, when is the... Remember to check down below in the description for the schedule for upcoming videos and such. And we'll come back to Among Trees whenever there's a major update that we can explore some more. Other than that, the only thing remaining to do would just be to explore the map. But there's really no purpose since we are growing turnips and beets and we've got all the items and all the end game stuff crafted. So that should be it for now. You guys have been amazing. If you want to see other survival games on the channel, make sure you check out everything from uh, Surviving Mars to The Last of Us, Last of Us 2, including uh, Surviving the Aftermath, and uh, many other games that have to do with survival and crafting. You guys have been amazing. So thank you very much for your support throughout the entirety of the series, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for being here and being the best community on YouTube. Goodbye, everybody.